Hi, I'm John Kalman from the Royal Melbourne Hospital in Australia, uh, where I'm the director of the Heart Rhythm Department. So we've looked at this in patients referred for atrial fibrillation ablation and uh, patients referred for atrial fibrillation management. And we've looked at it a number of times over the years and each time we've looked at it, it's in excess of 50% prevalence of sleep apnea in our AF patients when we're using a cut point AHI of 15, which in the guidelines is in the range of moderate uh, sleep apnea. Um, and even when we get into the range of severe sleep apnea, those patients with AHI above 30, we see 20 to 30 percent of patients in that range. So this is a very prevalent and common problem in this population. And very early on and again more recently, we've looked in the AF population at the correlation between outcomes of a overnight, formal overnight sleep study and the results we get on a questionnaire and traditionally we've used the Berlin questionnaire and we found what the sleep physicians have known for many years and told us when we started to get interested in this there's very poor correlation that the, the, these um, questionnaires are very insensitive and non-specific for diagnosing sleep disordered breathing in an AF population indeed in any population and given the very high prevalence in our AF patients our approach is actually to screen everybody with a screening study which is usually an at-home screening study but we work very closely with our sleep department at the pre and, and I think that's the key is to have a very good working relationship with the sleep physicians and at the moment you, because we're conducting a large randomised study, every patient uh, gets a sleep study, but this was our practice even prior to initiating the study, was to have a screening um, overnight study, usually at home, for all patients coming for an AF ablation. All of the evidence shows very clearly that if you have untreated sleep disordered breathing, and you have atrial fibrillation, that you have poorer outcome. You have poorer outcome from cardioversion, you have poorer outcome from catheter ablation. And when you think about what's happening during an, multiple apneic episodes, it's, and the impact of those apneic episodes on the heart, both the major changes in intrathoracic pressure, the marked decrease in oxygen saturation and rise in CO2, um, together with the sympathetic activation, repeated sympathetic activations, it's not at all surprising that sleep disordered breathing not only progressively creates an abnormal atrial substrate, but then with these major changes in autonomic tone happening repeatedly every night, initiates the triggers that interact with that substrate and drive atrial fibrillation. We're also continuing in a prospective way to evaluate outcomes in, uh, of treatment and we're also looking at whether the substrate that develops in AF patients and we've previously uh, looked at this and shown that patients with sleep disordered breathing uh, have abnormal substrate and others have shown the same thing whether to an extent that substrate is reversed when you uh, treat the sleep disordered breathing. So in recent years we've become very much aware of the importance of risk factor management in treating patients with atrial fibrillation. And whether this be sleep disordered breathing, whether it be obesity, whether it be hypertension, I think it's really critical for those of us in the field to be very aware of and focused on the need to treat these risk factors along with the management of the atrial fibrillation if we want to get better outcomes for our patients because it's these underlying risk factors that drive the process and if you don't interfere or interrupt that progressive remodeling underlying process then it's very much less likely that any intervention such as cardioversion such as ablation is likely to have long-term impact and oftentimes these different risk factors go hand in hand with each other but they can also occur in isolation and it's important to diagnose and manage them and that is particularly true for sleep disordered breathing. Mm -hmm.